It won't be the first time that was recorded. <laughs> okay, so the commission. So what we're discussing, we had already a sugya of when there's two chatseris that are side by side. If there's no air done at all, the people of Chatser A didn't make an air, the people of Chatser B didn't make an air, and surely A and B didn't make an air together. Nevertheless, if there are Kalim that were out in Chatser A or in Chatser B, when Shabbos arrived, those Kalim would move from Chatser to Chatser. We had a Shaila in the Gemara. If Chatser A only made an internal error for themselves, can they still pass Kalim from Chatser A to Chatser B? And we had one Shita who held that you'd make a Zera, that since it's possible that the Kalim from the houses in Chatser A will go out into the Chatser A, because they made their own air, so they're allowed to take Kalim out from their house. And the Chatser, we're afraid that those Kalim might end up in Chatser B. And those are not allowed to be moved to Chatser B. And then we had Allah is in Chatser A and Chatser B, make an air together, and it's a free for all. Anything can go from any house in Chatser A to any area in Chatser B. But the question is if you have two Chatseris that have no access to each other, there's a wall in between them, you can't make an air because they cannot be considered joined. There has to be access in between them in order for two Chatseris to be able to join together in an air. And the subject of our Sugya is what is called a proper access so that we can allow these two chatseris to make an error together. What if there was a window in the wall in between two chatseris? Dalit al dalit, and it was four by four. So we know the minimum size to be a proper partition is 10 fachamai. If there's a window in the wall, it has to be chasar. It has to be within 10 fachamai of the ground. Because if it's above 10 fachamai, it doesn't matter because underneath there's a proper barrier. But if there's a window of four by four and it's in the ten on the ground, Ma'arvin Shnaim, they have the option not to join. But if they all they also have the option to join together because of that space, that window in between them. So you might ask, if they have no window in between them, so how could they pass anything back and forth anyway? There's no access. The answer is there could be smaller holes. And if there's smaller holes, you wouldn't be able to pass from one to the next without a mirror. And you cannot make an error, but at least there's at least one access that's four tvachim by four tvachim that's within ten tvachim of the ground. Pachas mi dal at al dal. If there was an opening, but it was not dal at al dal, or the mailim ayud, or if it's the hole in the wall is above ten tvachim on the ground, then ma'arvin shnayim, then ma'arvin echad, then they're separate and they're not considered connected to one another. And therefore, they each can have a separate air. You cannot make an air together. Beautiful, simple mission. Lemos tenanan stomach of shimbin amir. Our mission says that a window that's a full spoken. Let's see. I just need to clarify something here. Sure. Why do they? Need, oh, this chutzer. These two chutzarim have more than one person in. In in each separate one, is that what they, you mean by making an eruv? Even if not, even if there's only one person in each chutzur, in order to be able to carry from chutzur to chutzur, they would need an eruv. Chutzur to chutzur, but Correct. so we're uh, discussing under what circumstances can two chutzurish join in one eruv? Yeah. So when it says ma'arvim shnayim, or when it says ma'arvim shnayim imratu ma'arvim nachas. So they have a choice. If there's a wall in between them with a doorway, they have a choice. Either they can join together or they can separate. How do you, what do you mean separate? What does that mean exactly? In other words, you, culture A can make an error for its own inhabitants that will allow any person to take from their homes in culture A. Oh, from their yeah. homes in Chatzar A. So there's not mu- one family. There are multiple families in that Chatzar. If they would be, uh, okay. yeah, if they're being Arab separately, then there would have to be multiple families in each Chatzar. Otherwise, uh-huh. they don't need an Arab. If there's, okay. that's correct. Okay. Sounded like there were only two homes, and with a, uh, with you know, and with each yeah. having a Chatzar. Yeah. When we we're discussing making two two Arabin, so in each hut there have to be more multiple than families. Yeah, okay. Be, indeed. I'll clarify that. Okay. So lay stomach 
what is the reasoning why you have to have a window that's at least four by four? So at this point in the Gemara, the Gemara assumes because if it's less than four by four, you'll say lovud and you'll say it as if it's closed. So we had a machlekes on the test. What is the amount of space that you say lovud? You say it if it's less than three, or if even if it's less than four. So the Gemara wants to say now that maybe the reason why our mission says that the opening has to be four by four is because of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, the Omar Kol Pachos Midalit Kolavadam. Anything that's less than four, which is if it's closed, and that's why this window, in order for it to be considered open, has to be at least four twelve. Dr. Gemara, no, because I feel tenor for Abona. Even if you say like Abona, that you say love it by three, the Shaila here has nothing to do with whether or not you consider it closed. I can't like the Rabbana, Lady Rabshimin and Will. The whole machlaikis between the Rabbana and the Rabshimin and Will is Elila in Lavudin. If you have pieces of wall that have gaps in between them, if you consider it as one big wall. Abdullah in Pisco, but when you're discussing what is the minimum amount of space that can be considered a viable entrance, that's a whole different shayla. Apil Rabban and Moidi, the Ika Dalar al Dal, Khosher, the Eloi Loi Khosher. The Rabbanan wouldn't say that a window bigger than three, since it's not considered closed, is a good access. Rather, you need a proper access, and everybody agrees that a proper access is a hole or an opening that's sports welcome by four Period. So, to go more about it. Focus me, Dalar. Pshita, it's Pasha. Kiva and the Amar, Dalar al Dalar. So, what, what the Gemara is focusing on is there's two cases in the Mishnah. If you have more than Dalar al Dalar, and it's within 10 Bachim, then you could join them together. But if you don't have a window that's Dalar al Dalar, or it's above 10 Bachim, then you can't join together. So, the Mishnah offers it in positive and then in negative. But Gemara Pshita, why does the Mishnah need to repeat it in negative that if you don't have the qualifications of Pachas and Dalar, then you can't join them together? Well, we, uh, that's pretty obvious. We already said what the qualifications are. I would know that if it's less than four by four or if it's above ten, I would know that, that, that that's an amount that you wouldn't be able to join the it series. So why did the Mishnah have to state explicitly on the negative side? The reason why it's a problem is because all of the window is above 10th Bachim. Even one sliver of the window is within 10th Bachim. So the, the reason why it repeats it over in the negative is to tell you that if no part of the window at all is within 10th Bachim from the ground, only then is it not a good access. But if even that tiny little strip of window is within 10th Bachim, it doesn't matter if the rest of the window is above 10th Bachim. And Tanina Lahad Tanar Rabbanan. And we have a price that actually expresses this very clearly. And it says as follows Kuloi Lumay Lumayud, if most of the window is above Yud, Umitsasai Bitaich Asara, but only part of the window is within 10th Bachim of the ground, or Kuloi Bisaich Yud, or if the entire window is within 10th Bachim of the ground, Umitsasai Lumay Lumayud, and only a little bit is sticking up above Yud, my Rabban Shnaim, Vimrotsu, my Rabban Yud. Frank the Gemara, on this price that we just quoted, the second case is completely redundant. If only a sliver of the window is below 10, we say that's good enough, and it's called a proper access. So you need a second case of the Bryser to tell us that if it's mostly below you and only a drop is sticking out, that that's an access. Of course it's an access. So you are Correct. In fact, that's a way that the Bryce sometimes expresses itself, and it says one halacha, and it's followed by a halacha that is partial. And that's a, a common structure in Bryce. Although I don't understand why it's like that, but that is a, a common way, and the more often said that. Okay, now we're getting into a complicated model. And with the Gemara that we're discussing is until now we were discussing square window. But now the Gemara wants to discuss a round window. And the Gemara is making an assumption that if you have a round window, you don't just look at its area to see if it has the same area as a square window that's four by four, which is 16 squares, welcome. Rather, what you do is you draw the square inside the circle, 
you draw the largest size square that you could inside the circle. So you inscribe a square into the circle and you need that square to be dalit al dalit, and it has to be within 10 tvachim of the ground, at least part of it. Now, none of the Gemara that we're going to discuss is mathematically accurate according to the Pashup Shah. And I worked with Rashi and I worked with Toysvist. The draw claims it is, and I didn't have a chance to work through the draw yet. I needed a calculator for it. But we're, we're going to be using pi here because pi is the formula that helps us understand the relationship between the circumference and the radius. And it's also the formula that lets us understand the area versus the radius. And Einstein said an unbelievable thing about pi. Pi is an infinite fraction. It's an infinite decimal. Because a circle, Einstein, has no beginning and no end. It's forever. Zakhtar, it says, Shakai. Hashem's name is Shakai because he said, die. The word Shakai is spelled with three letters. Sheen is three, Dalit is four, three, four. and Yud is one, which is three, one, four. So Shakai, including, including the name Shakai, is Murumas, the formula for pi, which is an infinite fraction, which talks about circles, which is infinite. Did you ever hear that from Einstein before? The fascinating Unbelievable. Word. From the Einstein that ever. So how did I hear it from Einstein? So I'll tell you who told it to me. Avram Weiss brought the son-in-law Margulis. And this Margulis grew up in Muncie, and they davened in the shul, the old Muncie, there was a shul called Beis Yisrael at the corner of Maple and 306, down the hill. And in that shul, davened an altar, an altar he, who was a professor, I believe, in Rutgers University. And he, had, he was reading some documents that someone, one of his fellow professors, had from Einstein, and he started in those documents. And it's a fascinating, I thought it was a fascinating uh, 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 comment from Einstein. Okay, so that's the So, you have a round window. The circumference of the circle has to be 24 tzvachim. Eshrim barba tzvachim. Now that's the size of the circle. And how close must it be to the ground? And two, and a drop, tzvachim, needs to be the soich yud within 10 of the ground. So if you were drawing a square in a circle, in order for the bottom of the square, which is above the bottom of the circle, in order for the bottom of the square to be below 10 tzvachim, the bottom of the circle has to be Two tzvachim and a mashahu within ten tzvachim of the floor. So j- just to get started here, there's a machlekes Rashi and Toysis, what this means. And Rashi is very difficult to understand. I'm not going to go through Toysis, I just want to show loy kim loy shapir shpakuntris beisalik humashu oyech mekeploy. Rashi is learning that the two tzvachim, and I'll, I'll, I'll start using some pictures. Rashi learns that when you're measuring two tzvachim, you're not measuring a height from here to here. Rashi means you're measuring two and a half tvochim. If you start from the bottom center of the circle, you measure linear, uh, linear, linear tvochim along the bottom ridge. And when you get two and a half tvochim this way, two and a half tvochim this way, you'll be within the circle, within the square. That's how Rashi learns, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. I'm still, I still, I didn't have a chance before Shabbos. Hopefully, I'll have time later to use the formula that allows me to plot the entire circle so I'll be able to see where that point comes out as far as height. But what Toysus does, Toysus says that's not what the Gemara means. Toysus just means that it's got to be with one tepach and a mashu vertically. So if I draw a vertical line from here to here, this is about a tepach and a mashu, and you have to make sure that this circle, the bottom of the circle, is below 10 tepachim up to a tepach and a mashu so that this will be within 10 tepachim of the ground. So let's look at the geometry. The geometry is, is that if you have a circle that has a circumference of 24, its diameter, the Gemara estimates it at one third, which means the diameter would be eight. It's not quite eight, it's actually 7.63 using two pi r. However, let's, let's look at it. If the diameter is eight, then the largest 
square you can inscribe into that circle is going to be 5.64 Tvachim, which is a lot bigger than 4 Tvachim, meaning this is oversized. And the Gemara is going to ask, why such a big circle, a smaller circle, should be fine? Now, the way I got 5.64 Tvachim is quite simple. I know the radius from here to here is 4. This is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And using that formula, I was able to figure out what, what this is, which is 2.82. And, if, and this times 2 is 5.64. So this is a circle that's 5.64 Tvachim squared. Now let's look how much space there is from here to here. Let's have a look at it. If you look at it carefully, if, there, if the diameter of a circle is 8, it means from the top to the bottom is 8. If I take away 5.64, which is the space that the height of the square, I'm left with a remainder of 2.35 Tvachim uh, total. See, this is a mistake. There's eight. If from here to here is eight, and from here to here is 5.64, eight minus 5.64 is 2.36. So that means if you add this space here and this space here together is 2.36 which means this is half of 2.3, this is about 1.15, and this is 1.15 profit. So it makes sense that this has to be a tefach and a mashu, this bottom of the circle has to be a tefach and a mashu within the 10 profit from the floor. This way, the bottom of this square will be at least within 10 profit. Does that make sense? Or was that too complicated? The silence is definite. Uh, got it, got it. Make sense? Okay, perfect. From here on in, it gets just, a little bit... Just to... Um, why, are you putting, why are we putting a circle outside the square when this, we... This is the window. This is the window that was actually in the wall. The, oh, that is the actual window. Right, so if you, in other words, what the Gemara is saying is if you have a round window, the window's got to be at least 24 Tvachim circumference in order that you can inscribe a square in it that will be Dalit al Dalit. So that's the size of the window. The position of the window has to be at the bottom of the window will be a Tevach and a Mashahu below 10 Tvachim, so that the bottom horizontal line of the square imaginary window will be within 10 Tvachim on the ground. When we worked with uh, Tchum, we always put the circle at, uh, inside the square. That's right. That's right, because what we were doing is we were saying that you don't just measure a radius of 2,000 amas. You square you measure, it. You measure 2,000 amas this way, and then you, you give them the bigger square. You give you throw in the corners for free. Right. But here's the opposite of that. And I'm happy you brought that up because the Gemara is going to, and I, I say this with the greatest of respect, the Gemara is going to confuse the calculation when you're putting a square around a circle Versus when you're putting a square into a circle, a circle. and that's going to come into. Uh, uh, so we, we using mathematical formulas can figure out the exact size circles about seventeen to get precisely the fourth tefachim by fourth tefachim. But the Gemara doesn't work with pi and with formulas. The Gemara works with estimates, and that's the way it's always been. So, and, so if you're if you're allowed to square a circle, why aren't you allowed to round the square? Well, one circle is area and one circle is windows. Yeah. <laughs> one circle is coming, one circle, one circle is windows. Right. Okay, so let's see the Gemara back here. Now, there's a lot of things that come into play. Because there's, there's the talk about the relationship between the, 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 the uh, circumference and the diameter. There's going to be talk about the relationship between the circumference of the circle versus the circumference of the square. And then Toysus is going to mix in the area of the circle versus the area of the square. And they don't all meet the same ratios. So before we get started, let's just look at our test case. In our test case, where our circumference is 24, the circumference of these four sides is 5.64 times 4. So that's about 21.22. Right? About five times four is twenty point six four times four is about point. So it's about twenty something. So they're all the way around is twenty, and 
and all the way around the square is is all the way around the square is 24 and all around the square is about 21 22. it's a very close relationship okay so let's see let's see what it says over here the gomorrah is assuming this is four so using the gomorrah's ratios because the gomorrah is not being as precise with math so if this was four by four that means the circumference of this square would be 16 four 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 and four and the circumference of this is 24 16 to 24 16 is 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 two-thirds of 24. Two -thirds. 24 divided by eight is three and 16 divided by eight is two so the gomorrah is going to use the the gomorrah is going to use the form of two-thirds or three quarters depending on what we're talking about so so that's that's how we'll start with but the gomorrah is going to um, mix it up a little bit so let's see what we have so Rabbi Yosef made his comment it has to be 24 and it has to be within um she in your so that if you draw a square window inside the circle nimsa mashu the the bottom of your window will slightly be within 10 and so here the gemara starts working with geometry with the with the with the estimations and tries to suggest others we know there's a rule Yes, by Baruch by Tepe. We know the ratio of circumference to diameter is one to three. So if I need, if I need a diameter of four, because I'm looking for a square that's four by four, so we trace your If I had a circle that had a circumference of 12, that would give me a diameter of four, that would be perfect. Now, here's where you're supposed to jump up and say, I wouldn't be perfect at all, because a diameter of four, a circle with a diameter of four, you cannot fit a square that's four by four into a circle that has the diameter of four, right? Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it's the, the area, not not the... Uh, well, the Gemara wants to suggest, let's take a circle that's, that's 12, has a circumference of 12, and why isn't that good enough? So if you have a, if you have a circle that has a circumference of 12 and a diameter of four, how could you possibly put a window in there? Right. And, the, and the area, the area of a square that's four by four is 16 square tvachim. A circle that's four in diameter is closer to 10 tvachim, if you do the math. I, I, if you want, we could do the math together. You could use pi r squared. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So r squared is four because we have, a, we have a radius of two. A circle with a diameter of four has a radius of two. So r squared is two times two, which is four. 4 times 3.1415 is about 13, right? 4 times 3.14 is approximately 13, right? 4, right. four times 3 is about 13. So it's 13 versus 16 is a lot less area. So, so the Gemara is suggesting, why don't you just get a circle with a circumference of 12 with a diameter of 4? So it should be enough. So of course, we know that's not enough because the square is much bigger. So right away, the Gemara answered that. So the Gemara, that wouldn't work. Because Hanan Mili, be igula, you're right. You'll have a diameter. You'll have a diameter of four any way you measure it because it's a circle. Abu Birivua, you have the extra four corners. But in Tve, you need much more. How much more do you need? So you, you need much more. So that's why you cannot use a circle that has a diameter of twelve. Spect more michti, kamen meruba over. So this is what David Zaltu brought up earlier. How much bigger? Is a square over a circle, revia a quarter. How do you get that? So let's 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 look at a typical circle. Um, if you put a square around the circle, so let's say I have a circle that has a diameter of four, right? If I have a circle that has a diameter of four, then its its circumference will be twelve, correct? And if I put a square around it, that square is going to be four by four. That's going to have a circumference of 16, right? So if I compare 12 to 16, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with, no, it's not three a quarters, quarter. three quarters. It's three, three quarters. quarters. So, it, it, so this must be going back to area then. So the area will be 25% more. So let's look at the area of the square versus a circle. The, we, we, we already discussed that a, a circle that has a diameter of four, a circle that has a diameter of four 
will have an area of about 14. About, I'm sorry, about, yeah, but 12. No, so it doesn't work out either. It, it, it doesn't work out exactly either. But the Gemara wants to say, will be we can say. So in fact, the Kama Maruba, yes, or Ali. How much bigger is a square than a circle? Revia, a quarter. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not really exactly that because we just did it. You put a square around a circle. If you put a square, let's, let's take a square that's four by four. So a square is four by four is 16. Yet a, 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 a circle with a diameter of four, we just did with about 12. So yes, 12 to 16. 12 to 16 is exactly a quarter because four times three is 12. Four times four is 16. Right, so it does work out. So it doesn't work out with circumference, but it works out with area. So Kama Maruba Yesra Eagle, how much area is a square that's circumscribed around the circle? How much bigger is it than the circle in area? Rivia is 25% bigger. If that's the case, Makmara, the shifts are soggy. Because we said, we said originally that if you have a circumference of 12, it'll get you a diameter of four. We know we need 25% more in that because, because the square is bigger than the circle by a quarter. So let's just add a quarter to the 12. We, on Omar Al, the Gemara suggested we should do 12. 12 wasn't good enough because we said that the square around the circle is bigger. Okay, how much bigger is it? 25%. So let's add 25% to 12 and make it into 16. So you should have it should be enough with a circle that has a circumference of 16. The sheets is ugly, it should be enough. So let's have a look at a circle that's 16. I actually plotted it out. If you have a circle that's 16 in circumference, then your radius will be 2.54, which means your square will be 3.59. Once again, you will not be able to fit a square that's four by four into a circle that has a circumference of 16. It simply won't fit. Why? Because when you want to make it four by four, the corners are going to stick out. So Zakti Gemara, that won't work because the corners are going to stick out. So for Hanimili, when do you have this ratio of 25%? Hanimili igula dinafik migav rivua. That's only when I'm putting the square around the circle. When I put a square around the circle, it adds 25% to the area. But if I'm putting the square inside a circle, that requires more space. My Because the corners are going to stick out. They won't fit in, like we demonstrated in the picture. If I have a circle that's four by four, and I try to squeeze it into a circle with a circumference of 16, the four corners are going to stick out. So what do you do? Michi, let's think about this. Kol Amo, so we tried 12, it didn't work. We tried 16, it didn't work. Now the Gemara wants to try a different number, a more complicated one. Kol Amso, anytime you have a right triangle that's one by one, the Revua, the hypotenuse, is going to be Amso Vitrei Balak Sain. So again, Anytime you're looking at a triangle, so let's look at this triangle. I'm looking at a triangle over here. So this is the right angle over here. If this is one and this is one, this will be one and two fifths. That's the estimate that's always used by the Gemara because they didn't have the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So they just said if you have a triangle that has two sides that perform, that the two sides that form the right angle, if they're exactly the same, then this will be one and two fifths larger. So let's do the math. Zok to Gemara. Kol amso b'revua, amso utrei chumshu balak sagi. So therefore, b'shivzer nachi chumshu sagi. It would be enough if you have 16 and four fifths for the circle. How do you get that? Very, very simple. Very simple. If we are looking for a square that's four tzvachim, by four tzvach, right? So the so the the uh, the diagonal line that I'm looking for, I'll actually draw it out as we do it. It'll be very very simple. We're looking for a square that's four tzvachim by four tzvachim. So let's draw this four tzvachim by four tzvachim. 
Okay, now, this diagonal, which would represent the diameter of the circle that I need, right? This diagonal will be this side times one and two fifths. So what's four times one and two fifths? Four times one is four. Four times two fifths is eight fifths. Eight fifths is one and three fifths. So if I take four and I add one and three fifths to it, it comes out being five and three fifths. That means from here to here is five and three fifths. I'm sorry, from here to here would be five and three fifths. Again, if this is four and this is four, that means I take four, I multiply it by one and two fifths, and I get five and three fifths. So this diagonal line is five and three fifths. Five and three fifths. Okay, now that I have that number, does anybody follow why I have this number of five and three fifths? Because I took the side of the right angle, it's this side is four, and the Gemara says, in order to if you have a right angle that's both that both of these lines are the same length, all you do is multiply by one and two fifths, and that'll be the distance of the hypotenuse. So four times one and two fifths is equal to five and three fifths. That makes so far so good. Does anyone shake their head? Does that make sense? Four times one and two fifths is five and three fifths. Simple math. Okay. Once I have five and three fifths, we have another rule that the diameter of a circle is one third of its perimeter. So now we need to multiply five and three fifths by three to get the circumference of the circle. So five times three is 15, simple enough. Three fifths times three is nine fifths. Nine fifths is one and four fifths. So if I take 15 and I add to it one and four fifths, I get 16 and four fifths. 16 and four fifths is 17 less one fifth. So Frank the Gemara, based on this number, if you have a circle whose circumference is 17 less two fifths, you have a perfect circle that will enclose, that will enclose a, a window that's four by four. Well, wouldn't it be 17 and one fifth? Well, let, let's, let's do the math. Five and three fifths. You said, you said, you said 16 and four fifths has to be the. Five the, and three fifths times three. We're multiplying five and three fifths times three. Yeah, so we'll it's 15 plus so nine five times five. 15 and three fifths times five. So we have three fifths times three. So we're multiplying by three. Three yeah, is nine fifths. Is one and four fifths. One and four fifths. So five, so 15, 15 plus one and four fifths it's is 16, 16 and four, and four fifths. fifths. Right, so it should be 17 and the 16 less. to 4 fifths is actually 17 minus 1 fifth. Right, okay, so the, you said 2 fifths, I thought. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's 17 minus 1 fifth, I apologize. Right. So it's 17 minus 1 fifth. So that's what the mission is, that's what the Gemara wants us to object. The shifts are nachi sagi. All I need is a circle that's 17 less 1 fifth, which is 16 and 4 fifths. I actually did the math on that as well using the Pythagorean theorem. Four fifths is 0.8, right? So 16.8 was my circumference. Based on that, I used the, I, I did the math and it worked out that the square is actually 3.78 by 3.78. But again, the Gemara is dealing with the formula being one to three. We know it's really not one to three. We know really it's, it's, it's one to a little bit more than three. When you're using um, two pi r to transfer from the diameter to the uh, to the uh, circumference, right? We know what it really is. Is um, what is my number here? It's not exactly the same number. That's right. It, it's seven, It's a little bit more. If if you have a if you have a uh, if you have a circle, the 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 uh, diameter is a little bit less than the third. But using the Gomorrah's averages, sixteen point eight seems to deliver us a whole. That'll give us the four fucking square. So it's not perfectly accurate, but that's how the Gemara works. So Frank the Gemara, now that we've shown you that you can easily deliver a window that's four by four inside a circle that's 16 and four fifths, why did Rabbi Yechidon say that you need a window that has a circumference of 24, which is significantly larger?
זאת גמורה, רבי יוחנן אמר כי דיין זה כיסוי. רבי יוחנן used the math principles of the דיינים of כיסוי, or אמרי לך רבון דה כיסוי, או לך רבון דה כיסוי, and they had a different set of rules. And they said, איגולו מגב ריבו הריבה, which is not relevant to our שיילה, that means when you put a square around the circle, it has 25% of the area that we discussed. What's relevant to us is, ריבו מגב איגולו, if you're putting a circle around the square, which is what we're doing, we're putting the circle around the square window, palga, which means if you have a window, if you have a window that's, that's four by four, which would mean, which would mean its circumference is 16, right? Four sides of four is 16. Then what you do is you take half of the 16, which is eight, and you add it to the top. So 16 plus eight, is 24. So it works out that it, it adds a third, one third of the circle is what the square takes up. Or when you add a circle around the square, you're adding 50% of the area of the square by adding the circle. So probably you have the square that has a circumference of 16. You take half of that, which is eight, add it to the square, add it to the 16, you get 24, and that's the size of the diameter that you need. So therefore, that's why Rebbe said you need 24. So it's a little bit difficult because it's not accurate. The math isn't accurate. The fact is you don't need such a big circle. So this is where we have a lot of difficulty. The math is not accurate. So the easiest way out, the article quotes from a safer by the name of Go'on Yaakov, that says that it, it, it's not really a mistake in math, it's just that Rebbe Yaakov wanted to be a little bit bigger. They wanted to be a little bit bigger, so, so you have your wiggle room, so it's clear. It looks clear to everybody that's good enough. So that's the easy. Yossi, so you don't have to do a technical math. Yes, even even the example here, because uh, you, you, when you did it, you you did it with the exact numbers. You needed something bigger because it only came out to three point. What did you show? It was three point. It came out to it less sixteen point eight. Came out to three point seven eight. Right, so it's less than four. So you're already that's already the problem. So I mean. Reichen was was even better than than the last case of the Gemara because Reichen was given access. Reichen ended up saying he's five point six four, which is way bigger. Right, way bigger. Okay, so you need somewhere in between to, to get the four. Seventeen, four probably. Off. I didn't know around seventeen would be perfect. But the Gemara is working a lot with estimates, right? The Gemara doesn't have these mathematical formulas, so the Gemara is dealing with these averages. It's not clear. But Tosha has a, a big problem. The way Rashi is learning this Gemara, the way I just explained it, the math simply doesn't add up. So Tosha has this for a problem. Tosha says. How could they have made such a big mistake? The math doesn't add up. So Toysus goes to a different shot. He has other classes as well. And Toysus says, you're not comparing circumference. You're comparing area. And with area, it works out that way. And Toysus, what Toysus says is, is, when he talks about half, if you take a square, and you put a circle inside it, and then you put a square inside that circle, this square will be half the size of the bigger square. And that's, that, that's where this half comes from. But at the end of the day, look what Tyson says over here. Look what Tyson says over here. Rabbi Yochan and the Hacha told the Devrayim, they made a mistake. Rabbi Yochan made a mistake. For you swurim shall a heck of Omri. So basically, Toysha says that the Rabunda Kishri were right. And their relationship of 50% wasn't talking about measuring, comparing the circumference of a circle to the circumference of a square. It was actually totally different. It was to compare the area of the square around the circle to the area of the square in the circle. And, and, he, and Rabbi Yochanan misunderstood what the Rabunda Kishri said and applied it to circumferences. He, he applied a law related to the relationship of the big square to the small square, and he applied that law to, to um, the circumference, which has no shaykhis, and it's a mistake. So that's what Toysha says. Toysha actually says that the Bioichanan made a mistake. The Gra does not like that at all, and the Gra has a whole different shot that I didn't figure out yet. You need a calculator to do it, but he just says, the chash You cannot say, like Toysha that Rabbi Yochanan made a mistake and misunderstood the math lesson from their bond to Kisri. And he goes through a whole different shot that I don't know yet, but I want to see if I can work it through. 
But it's, it's all fascinating stuff. Okay, so I'll more about it. The rest is easy, easy. So we'll go quickly. We're running late already. One second. Is it a reason a lot to say that uh, uh, that that an Amir was wrong? You know, this is the old Machlokes. Chaim Kri spoke out when the Rambam said about certain remedies aren't good, and the Rambam said these don't work, and 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 the, the draw came out swinging that the, the, the Rambam's involvement in philosophy skewered his outlet to deny things that the Gemara said in the Tapi courses. Right, that Chaim Kri once had a whole Chumash Chabur on that, and the draw, even though he chastised the Rambam. Dramatically, for 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 saying that the remedies don't work, he he still said, "Don't you dare chaper with the Rambam. He's a holy big time couple." But the Gra often protested against Rishonim who said that Amiroi made mistakes. Um, really? What? Say that again. The Gra often Gra went... would get very upset with Rishonim. Who, yeah. Who, How often does that who, happen, though? I only know of two. I know this case, and I know the case with the uh, with the medical with the uh, remedy that the Gemara offers. Yeah, well, the, in that case, he, the Rambam is saying that the, like the uh, uh, the nature changed. The Bria's uh, really Mishana, and the Gra what? did not take to that well at all. Oh, or does the Gra say that the remedies work today? Yeah, that's what that it says if you do them right. Uh, Not a little. So, so the Gra likes to explain the Rishonim. This is he likes to explain the Gemara. So I'm looking. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'll ever get through it. But uh, but it's, it's interesting stuff because whenever we learn about geometry in the Gemara, the Gemara uses generalizations and rules that aren't really as precise as the mathematical formulas that we have today. I'm hoping that if I do the Gra, it's going to line up to that millimeter, and then it'll be Gishmak. So we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see the more about it. Pachim dal adal. Amar of Nachman. Lo yishonu ala chalon shebein beis chateri. We're talking about when do you need this minimum? That's only if it's a window between two chateris. What does Einstein, Einstein say about this Gemara? <laughs> this vice <laughs> Okay. Lo yishonu ala chalon shebein beis chateri. Al chalon shebein beis batim. But if it's between two homes, so you have a a a a, a, a townhouse. That there's a wall in between two houses, then if there's a hole in the wall, uh, even if the hole is more than 10 welcome above the ground, my time, what's the reason? The house is a bit of its fault. So there's two shots, and Raja seems to say it's a longness. You always look at the house as if it's full, from a mela, the ground is higher. If anything, you'd have a problem with the window is blocked. But there are those who learn basically what means in a house. There's always a stool available. There's always something available to stand on. And therefore, even if the window's higher, it's not an issue. You know, we always have stools in the house to reach the higher kitchen cabinet, to reach the higher shelves in the farm trunk. So Zokumar, Ace Rabal Rab Nachman. We have a price that says, Echad ni chalon shibin bez chatsoris, vechad ni chalon shibin bez batim, vechad ni chalon shibin bez aliyas, vechad ni chalon shibin bez gagin, vechad ni chalon shibin bez chatarin, chatarin, no matter what the window is, kulon dalar al dalar the soichasar. So how could you say that a, a, a window in between two homes is different? The Brisa says they're all exactly the same. Dr. Gemara, Tergumar, Ab Nachum will learn the Brisa is referring to a chatseris. Only by the chatseris is it required. That. But Gemara, that's not what the Brisa says. Well, Echad, Li Katami, it says they're all exactly the same. Dr. Gemara, Terguma Adal Adal Adal. He'll learn that the Mishnah only needs to say that all of these have the same aloha, like the size of the window it has to be dollar or dollar, but like the height of the floor, maybe it does not apply to a bias. What about Lula Pasuch when the bias Lalia? What if one person lived on the main floor, another family lived on the top floor, and they had a trap door to get back and forth from the main level to the second level? You know, when your neighbor drops in to see you, in that case, it would be literal, you would drop down to see you. In order to say that there's a proper access, you need to have a staircase there. Or even if there's no staircase, it's no problem. Maybe this whole thing that in a house you say windows are always accessible. That's only if it's a window in the wall. But if it's in the ceiling, 
I don't know why not, or you say that it's good anyway. On my way, you're not going to answer any turf. You don't need a ladder. You don't need a. You don't need a staircase. So how we know? So he thought. Rababa thought that what the Nachman meant was Shulam Kabul who didn't He doesn't need a permanent staircase, but a Shulam Ari Tzarich. You need to have a ladder in the house. But but we proved that wrong. Itmar Amay Beyozer Bar Minumi Amar Rab Nachman Echad Shulam Kabul Bechad Shulam Ari Ain Ait Tzarich. It does not need anything. Doctor Hedek Mishnabayit. I want to catch up to where we finished today in Shul. So I'm going to push very easy tomorrow. You have a wall that was with two chateris, it was ten fachamai. It's a barrier. And the top surface of the wall is four fachamai. So it's a place by itself. We know if you have an area that's four fachamai by four fachamai, it's considered a rishus for itself on its own. So the loch is because you have a proper wall in between with no access. So chater A, chater B cannot. Transport anything from Chatzor A to Chatzor B or back and forth. How you brush your pairs? What if on top of this wall, remember it's 10 Tvachim high, it's 4 Tvachim wide, which means it's a Rishus of Nayatma. So, Kum Tachos, you have Chatzor A is a Rishus of Yachid, Chatzor B is a Rishus of Yachid, and then between the two Rishus of Yachid, there's a third Rishus of Yachid, the top of the wall. So, the Lach is Elu Oilan Mikan Vaikun. People from Chatzor A can go up to the wall and eat food from the wall, but they can't bring anything to the wall. But they can go there to the wall. And people from Khachabi can also go to the top of the wall and enjoy some food. But they're not allowed to move anything from the top of the wall to their shows or vice versa. What if the wall in between these two chatseris broke? Ades or Amois, if the hole is not larger than 10 Amis, we look at it like a doorway. And therefore, when there's a doorway in between two chatseris, the two chatseris have the option to make one big area to join them together, or they have the option to make separate areas. Because a breach up to 10 amis is considered like a doorway. But Yoshimikam, but if the breach was greater than 10 amis, that means there's no wall anymore between these two chatseris. They become one chatser. What would be the aloha if you had this wall that was not for Tvachim White? It was a wall that was two tvachim wide and something's on top of the wall. So Amar Rab, Avir Shtei Ritzuyes, so let this work. We consider that it's Chachar A and Chachar B up there because it's a small, thin wall. And therefore, if there's pairs up there, Lo Yozuz Boy Afilu Malinino. You're not even allowed to budge those pairs. Now we know that when you have an area that's less than four tvachim, it's considered a Mokham Tur. But you see Rab doesn't hold it as Mokham Tur in this case. Or it's above ten vachim, and it becomes a rishus for zich, and therefore you're not allowed to budge any pairs because you might be moving it from chutzur a to chutzur b, which is also to do midir above. Rabbi Yechonu Amar, Rabbi Yechonu says no problem. Elu ma'alam mikan va'oichlin, elu ma'alam mikan va'oichlin. Not only can you go up there, you can bring stuff from your chutzur up there because it's a mokum tour, and therefore chutzur a can bring stuff up there and back down, and chutzur b can bring stuff up there and back down. Now we go to the Brisa. Elo oilin mikan va'oichlin. The elo oilin mikan va'oichlin. Oilin in malaloi. They're allowed to go and eat on the top of the wall, but they're not allowed to bring stuff up. So this contradiction of Yerichon and who says you could even bring stuff up? So Kumar Hami Gomer. Yes, by our bar al our bow. If there's four fachim of thickness on top of the wall, then oilin in malaloi. Then you're allowed to go up there and eat there, but you can't bring stuff there because the top of the wall gets its Status of its own rishus ayachid, but ain't by our bar alarba. If the wall is not four tefachim thick, then according to Rabbi Yochanan, malin nami, you'd even be able to carry stuff up there because that's a makom tour. In the makom tour, you're allowed to carry to to and from. Was Rabbi Yochanan tamei the chiyas Rabbi Dimi Amar Rabbi Yochanan makom shein by our bar alarba. Anytime you have a platform that's not four tefachim by four tefachim, and it, this platform happens to be on the border between rishus ayachid and rishus arabim. People from the Rishus Arabim could put their stuff on there. People from the Rishus Ayachid could put their stuff on there. As long as they don't allow things to go from the Rishus Ayachid to the Rishus Arabim and vice versa. In other words, it's like an Indian reservation. You're allowed to go in there tax free, but you're not allowed to smuggle through, a, through an Indian reservation from Canada to the United States if it's on the board. This is, we learned this tomorrow about the door closed. If you're standing in your doorway, 
So the 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 threshold of your door would be considered a Mokum tour if it's not for Tvokum. And therefore, you can take things from the Rosh Hashanah to the doorpost and pass it out to the Rosh Hashanah. And the same thing to Rosh Hashanah, but you cannot take from the Rosh Hashanah and put it to Rosh Hashanah. Trek to more of a Rav, the last lady, Rahimi. Rav doesn't hold of this idea of Mokum tour, and he holds you can't do anything up there. Zokimar, a huge kiddush. Ever assures the Raisa. In a case where you have this Mokum tour, and it's in between two Rishuyos, that there's an Isra de Raisa to go from one to the next. So if you have this Mokum tour that's in between a Rishus Yoke de Raisa and a Rishus Rabin de Raisa, Hakanami, there I agree that the Mokum tour is, a, is fine. And you're allowed to bring things from the Rishus Yoke to it, and you're allowed to bring things from the Rishus Rabin to it. Hakanami, Skidam, here is Rishuyos de Rabonam. What are we talking about here, Narsugya? There's two Chatseris, there's two Rishus Yokes. Mida Raisa, you're allowed to carry from one Rishus Yoke to the next. But the Chachamim also chizuk to the brain. The Rabbanon said you're not allowed to carry from one chotter to the next. The Raisa you'd be able to. So because the whole issue to go from one chotter to the next is with the Rabbanon, the Rabbanon wanted to be so strict about it that even if there was a mokum tour in between, they wouldn't allow you to carry because Chachamim also chizuk to the brain. Sometimes in order for people to listen to the Takana, they have to really make it really serious so that people won't violate it. But when there's an issue of the Raisa involved, then you could be Mako and he will allow the Mokum tour to trans- to communicate both with the Rishus Yochid and Rishus Rab. Amar Rabba Amar Huna Amar Nachman Koishol Shemin Shnei Chateres. You have a wall that was between two Chateres, but Tzidei Echad Gavoya Asar Tvachem, Tzidei Echad Shavala Aron. You have two properties that are on different grades. So on one side of the wall, the grade is lower, so the wall is ten Tvachem high. On the other side of the wall. The grade is much higher. The wall might only be one tefak high. So who has the right to use that top of the wall? So the person who the top of the wall is with the tenth vacham of his property, he could use it. But the guy who has a lower elevation cannot use the top of that wall. Why? The person who the wall is lower for him can use that wall easier. The person who the wall is ten vachem high, it's difficult for him to use it. It's very high. And therefore you have a surface that it's easier for one to use than the other. You'll consider it without carrying in the reshus of the person who can access it easier. The same thing with a ditch. A rich You had a ditch between two tzatzeris. Again, the Chatseris were at a different elevation. The higher elevation, for them, the ditch is 10 Pachim deep. But the other side that had the lower elevation, the ditch might only be a Tevach deep. So the law is who gets to use that space? Look at the Karen and Shabbos. Noise, noise, and Lazash and Shabbal Arts. Should have a lay, Lazat, Ashmi, Shabbanakis, Lazat, Ashmi, Shabbakasha. The same thing whenever there's an area in between two Chatseris. It's easier for one to use than the other, then we let it be by the easier one. But Shrikhi, why did we need two halachis that are basically the same that says that the guy who can who can access it easier, he he needs a lot of carry there? Dr. Mar, the Yash means the Kaisal. If we would have only seen the case of the Kaisal that the guy who lives higher up can use, we shouldn't the goiva, we People are happier to use things that are above the ground. It's very hard to deal with a storage area that's below ground level. It's hard to reach in. So, Aimaloi, you would have thought that it's even also for the guy who has a lower elevation. So, the rice, the Gemara does not have to tell us specifically that you could use a ditch. You only knew the case of a ditch. People are more likely to store something in a ditch because it can't fall off or break. But on top of a wall where I'm afraid it could roll and fall off and break, aim alone, maybe wouldn't be allowed. What if you live along a wall and you want to raise, and the wall is 10 Fakhamai, so you can't use it, but you want to be able to use the top of the wall. So you build up the grade at the bottom of the wall. So at that area where you build up the grade, the wall isn't so tall. If where you raise the grade, it's four tefachim. 
you look at it like it's a doorway. It's a doorway to the top of the wall. And once you have a doorway to the top of the wall, you can get there, and then you can walk along the top of the wall everywhere. So the whole wall is considered accessible to you. In Malav, but if the area that you raised the grade in was not for Tvachim, and Mishtamish al you could only use the area of the wall that's right above where you raised the grade. It doesn't make sense. If that little area worked, then you can get up to the top of the wall from there. Well, then the Kula Kaiser will establish. So then you should have access to the whole top of the wall. And if it's not a good access, then if you look at it, it's not Eloi. Then you shouldn't be able to use the wall at all. Omar Avina, you're right. When I'm building up the land to act as a doorway, if it's either a doorway or it's not a doorway. So if it's not four Tvachim wide, you cannot use the wall at all. We're discussing the differences. We're discussing the going to Akar Chuyum Eroshim. What you did is you knocked off one of the bricks on top of the wall. So now you can easily access that space where you knocked the brick off because the wall is not so tall in that location. And that's what that's what um, the Gomorrah meant when the Gomorrah said that if you made a big enough hole on the top of the wall, you took away enough blocks that you actually have four tzvachim of width, then you can climb up there and get to the rest of the wall. But if you only have a little bit, then you could only use that area where you knock the wall down, but the rest of the area is not accessible to you. Look to Gemara back here. Amar Bechil, we took a little bit more, and we're going to end right at the top of the base. Amar Bechil, Kofa, Seifa. What if you took a, a bucket and you turned it upside down and you put it up against the wall so it acts as a stool? Mimai, that works. Gemara Bamai, it's not a permanent fixture. Dabra Nittal B'Shabbos, it's not even Muksa. You're allowed to remove it from where it is. And with Dabra Nittal B'Shabbos, it's in Mimai. So you can't say, since it's not permanent there, you can just take it away. That wouldn't count to make the wall lower. <laughs> you actually pushed mud around it. So you sort of fastened it into the ground. That doesn't change anything. You're allowed to lift it right out. What time we learn? You took a fig and you buried it in straw that was muxlan chapters because you're going to use it for building. Or if you bury a cookie in dead coals. But the coals are muksa. In the gula if there's any part of your fig that you can grab without touching the earth or the tevin, not with Shabbos, you can pull it out on Shabbos. This way you ignite. We talk about a bucket that has a rim. So what happened was you turned the bucket over, it had a rim, and now you put earth on top of the rim. So if you lift the bucket up, you're actually directly or indirectly lifting up the earth. Who said you're not allowed to lift up the bucket, even though you're lifting up the earth that's going to be captured in the rim of the bucket? But now, time in lepis, it's nine takas of What if you bury certain vegetables in the earth, not because you wanted them to sprout? They didn't sprout, but you just wanted to keep them cool so they'll stay fresh. So the law is, this man should mix this alan if you can pluck them out of the ground because you have some leaves sticking above the ground. You don't have to move the earth over to get to the vegetable. You can just pull it from the leaves. And the choshes. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be worried that they'll, that they'll sprout and it'll become climb if it's near a vine. You don't have to worry that it grew more and then you're going to take miser from the extra part that grew. If it's sweet here, you don't have to worry that it's grew on sweet up. And what's not get to us is when it's not Shabbos. It's not Muksha. You can pull it out of the ground on Shabbos even though you're lifting up the earth that's sitting on top of the bulb when you pull it out. So I bezoy, this bucket, you can move away. If you can move this bucket away, why is it called a permanent um, fixture and that it, can, it makes the wall lower? You put it in with concrete. And in order to get it out, you need a jackhammer, which is muk, which you can't use on Shabbos. That's, when it's such a permanent installation, that's when we say it makes the wall smaller and you're able to use the top of the wall. Okay, let's stop here.